I think we have learned two things from this morning's discussion. One is that in principle everybody seems to be committed to start the work of, on the ADP. But on the other hand, the second uh, thing that we have learned is that the divergences that have been there present in Durban still are present. So some, for some countries it is still important that we finalize first the work under the LCA and for some it is still important that we are not moving too rapidly towards a common legally binding system. And Switzerland is part of, I think, quite an interesting alliance between Liechtenstein, Monaco, Mexico, South Korea. Quite a broad alliance in the sense that it incorporates developing and developed countries. Uh, and yet you've, you've come to the, the view in your presentation, you were first, that you know, common but differentiated responsibility was important, the respect for respective capabilities and equity. What, why do you, as an alliance, think those are so important? Well, perhaps because we are an alliance of uh, countries from different regions and different stages of development, that uh, we, uh, we uh, put so much importance to the concept of equity and common differentiated responsibility and respective uh, capabilities. For us as a group, it is important that the future regime will be applicable for everybody, but that at the same time it will also respect uh, or reflect the different uh, responsibility capabilities, and, and this is quite important. So we think that we would, should move towards a legally binding framework with obligations for everybody, but these obligations will have to differ and reflect the different status of the different countries. And you, you mentioned earlier that we've seen some of the some of the lines that were apparent in Durban reappear today and I guess they reappeared yesterday too in the debate over equity. One word seems to have so many different meanings. How, how as a negotiator do you anticipate those differences being resolved? They, they, some of them seem so intractable. Can they realistically be, be resolved at least in, at this conference? I think what is not realistic is to strive towards a magic formula that will translate equity into, into, into operation. I think this is not, not feasible. But what we hope that we should be able is that we start to develop a common understanding of different uh, principles or different criteria that equity involves, a different kind of equity criteria. And each of these criteria leads to slightly different outcomes. But it's important that we develop a common understanding of this criteria that sharpens our, sensi our sensibility towards the equity issue and then based on that we have to negotiate together and to develop together uh, the, the, the concrete commitments and obligations that we are striving for. What, however, I think is quite important also to acknowledge is that all these different criteria of equity, they clearly are strong arguments against maintaining a division of the world into two groups of countries. I think we have to work, uh, to work together towards something that is reflecting a more refined graduation between the countries so that we are really able to, to, to place responsibilities and commitments based on the different uh, capabilities and, and, and responsibilities. Touching briefly on the Kyoto Protocol, which you mentioned the idea of a legal instrument uh, by 2015 under the Kyoto Protocol, how do you see the discussions regarding a, an extension period to that um, developing? There are lots of, lots of rumours behind the scenes, but do you sense that um, an extension period will, will be agreed, broadly speaking? Yes, our impression is that we will agree on a longer period, up to 2020 for the second commitment uh, period under Kyoto. Switzerland would have to be open to both solutions. There are good arguments in favour of both approaches, but at the end we have the impression that the argument is in favour of a longer commitment period, which then would be able to allow us to smoothly lead up into the new regime, in the new post-2020 regime. This is the best solution. However, what will be important is to find the solution that we do not lock in low ambition. And we will certainly be able to find something so that uh, in, the, in, in the middle of that period, for example, the countries that have made commitments are invited to review their pledges and then that they are also to allowed to, to increase their pledges and their commitments under Kyoto in the middle of the period. And, and a final question uh, on the Green Climate Fund, which was obviously a, a, a big issue in Durban. Um, we understand that it's been postponed for now in terms of the, the finalities. Uh, how big a disappointment do you think that is to, to everyone involved? And do you think, you know, are there, are there serious problems behind the scenes? No, I think, well, first of all, we, we do not uh, hope and we do not expect the postponement of uh, the operationalization of the Green Climate Fund 
fund beyond the end of this year. So we expect that the board will be able to, to do all the work this year. The only thing that for the moment had to be postponed is the first meeting of the Green Climate Fund board. And the reason for that is that not all groups have yet been able to nominate their members. But I think now uh, with an additional extension, that will be the last extension, and we will have a meeting in July. We will have the first meeting in July. It's late, and we have hoped at the beginning that time will still be sufficient to do all the work this year. It will be a little bit more intense uh, in the second half of the year, but that has also the benefit uh, that it allows also to build up a better momentum by having the meetings closer together. You cannot easily bring something from one meeting to the next. But we are very confident, and we are also very committed to, to, to accomplish the work by the end of this year.